Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and uh, this is a review of the Canon G550 printer. Now, the G500 series is known by lots of different model numbers around the world. So it's a G650 in the UK where there's a scanner on top. Uh, there's a G546. Well, there's loads of different versions of it. Uh, they're all the same printer inside. They're just slightly different models for different markets. So um, I'm going to have a look through the details of using it. Now, there's a written review on the North Light Images website, which I go into a little bit more technical detail. Uh, my written reviews are generally quite long and intended to complement the videos. Uh, the videos are a relatively new thing for me. Um, normally I just do the long written ones. But anyway, here's uh, a look at the Canon G550. What is it? Well, it's an A4 printer, so it's quite small for printers that I look at. I tend to look at much larger printers. But I wanted to have a look at this one um, as much as anything uh, to see what I could do with it. Uh, to see whether I could get better results out of it than you might initially first think given its specifications and that. So in terms of setting the printer up, it's really quite easy. And I've done a video uh, looking at the setup and there's an article as well. Check out the links at the bottom of the uh, video here. That's got all the links to further information. Um, as you see, there are six inks in this. These are dye inks, and you fill up uh, via bottles that you just put on top, and you fill up, and there are tanks underneath. So we have uh, a black, a grey, red, cyan, magenta, yellow. Now, the normal colours for inks that you'd get would be black for a four colour printer, uh, black, cyan, magenta, yellow, uh, that's supplemented by a grey, which is not particularly meant for black and white use. It's for improving the range of tonalities you can get with the strong coloured inks. The red ink expands the printer gamut a little bit, uh, just gives you a little bit more intensity. But also red and grey mixed, it just adds to the mix of colours you can get. Now, if you're confused about ink types and things like that, I've done quite a few other videos and that looking at different inks, what they mean, and what they actually mean to you printing, which is not always the same thing, because uh, a lot of what you uh, maybe read and see people post about different inks and that is heavily influenced by marketing materials. And uh, I'm trying to cut through that a little bit and say, well, this is what you can actually do. The inks themselves, they're dye-based inks, and they are Canon's older Chromalife um, inks rather than Chromalife Plus or go Chromalife 100 as opposed to Chromalife 100 Plus. Now the Plus inks are newer ink design and they are they last longer and in particular the black is better. So if you are looking at a dye based printer um, this is one of the reasons why in terms of print quality the Canon Pro 200 which is also a 13 inch or A3 Plus printer um, is a better choice perhaps if you're looking at the photo side. But I know a lot of people look at a printer like this because of the size of these ink tanks here. You fill these up, I've printed no end of prints testing and the levels have barely gone down. Um, this is a printer for experimenting with these tank printers like this if you're concerned about ink prices. If print quality matters more to you, then I'm sorry, you're just going to have to pay a bit more for ink. In my mind, it's worth it, but that's another matter altogether. Now, the inks just go through uh, into a head here. Um, the print head comes out across the usual way. It's an inkjet printer. As I say, the version with a scanner on it has two lids, as it were. One lid where you access in here and one lid where you lift to get to the scanner. No difference to the actual print side of things here. Now, in setting it up, I've used wireless for this. It works absolutely fine, connected through to our house wireless network. Um, I've got some details in the setup information I've published elsewhere. Uh, the wireless link works perfectly well. It even works well with uh, my wife's iPad, my iPhone, her iPhone, various other bits and pieces. You can connect anything to this. Now, Canon provides software to drive it. Um, and they provide software with it. 
This really is consumer level software. Um, if you want to print good quality pictures, and I am looking at this printer not as an office printer, there's no duplex on it or anything like that, uh, which you don't need for photo work anyway, it's rather pointless. Um, I'm looking at this just for printing photos. Now, I have also printed greetings cards and various other things as well, so it's quite a versatile printer. Um, simple loading at the back here. You can stack several sheets. Um, I've stacked over a dozen sheets of art paper in this and it had no problem feeding it, so it works very well there. But anyway, I've got it set up, no wireless connection. I could have a USB, but no wireless connection, and I've been using it with Apple Macs. Now, we don't have any Windows PCs here. Uh, normally, that makes doesn't make a difference when I'm testing printers. With this printer, it did, but I'll, I'll come back to that in a bit. Because the drivers you install, the normal Windows driver is just normal print driver. For the Apple Mac, and there's older versions and newer versions, it makes use of a function that Apple call AirPrint. So it uses the AirPrint driver. Now, normally, if you accidentally set the AirPrint driver on a Mac, it's a great way of suddenly losing all kinds of printer functionality. And Whenever I've put other printers about setting them up, how to use them, how to set up networking and things like that, I've always said, if you see the word air print, be very careful because the air print driver has severely restricted functionality. So, um, but it's easy to use. So it works well with the iPad and works well with the iPhone and uh, the Canon software, the Canon app will work very well with that. But you do have to remember that whether you're using this on a Mac or a PC, it does make a difference. Now, I've set it up and I've printed it. Now, I'll come back to color management, which is the key area where this affects things in, in, in a bit. But for the actual use of the printer, it's just a normal printer. You load up paper, you go to whatever software you're using, and you print. Um, it works very well. The paper feeding is reliable. As I had no paper feeds, no problems, even with thick, quite thick, even with quite thick media, I've had no real issues with it. Now I've printed um, on pre-folded greeting cards, for example. Now these are quite stiff, and they've got a pre-crease on them. Um, these are test images um, for testing print performance, by the way. Um, I cover that in a look at greeting card printing with this. Now, the paper in those, or the card, thin card, goes in, works absolutely perfectly. One thing I would say that to get the best results from any inkjet printer like this for printing on card, you absolutely need to use card that is meant for use with inkjet printers. If you get ordinary cheap card stock, you are very likely to get poor results on it. I'm regularly asked by people, I want to print on such and such cardstock. Um, you find out it's cheap card, maybe reasonable quality looking card, but it's not inkjet card. And that makes all the difference because it's about the surface layer on the card that needs to be applied to take the inks, to stop them bleeding, to give the density of colour and things. So if you're thinking of printing greeting cards, and this does print them very well, um, just make sure you use proper cardboard for it, because otherwise you'll get rubbish results. Now, in terms of media types in general, there are lots, and you set them by the screen here, when you load up a paper. And in fact, when you load a sheet of paper, it will ask you here to set the media type. Now, you don't have to do that. I, I do anyway, just as a sort of belt and braces, just to help me not to get things wrong. Now I'm chop, chopping and changing and doing lots of different papers and things. So it's really quite easy for me to put the wrong bit of paper in if I'm not careful. So I always on a printer, I always make sure I set the paper type here if it's available as an option. So for this particular paper here, this black and white print, um, this is Canon Fine Art Rough. Um, and this is the only um, fine art setting on this. So any other fine art papers you might choose to use, you will use the fine art rough setting for it. Now, quite a stiff paper, nicely textured, sort of a watercolour style paper. You load it in the back here um, and it will ask you for details that you set that just and, and that's it, you're done and it's ready to print. 
there's no problem whatsoever. In terms of um, print times, it takes perhaps at the highest quality setting about five minutes for a full sheet, two minutes at the medium quality setting. Normally, I, in looking at printers, pretty higher end printers, the very highest print quality settings are often barely noticeable any difference between them and say medium quality setting. So for larger printers I'll often print at the normal quality setting. With this one you do notice a slight difference if you look at fine detail um, between the high quality and the normal quality. And given it's a difference between five minutes for a full size A4 print here uh, at the highest quality versus a couple of minutes for the medium quality. If I'm making pictures that I want to show to people, I'm going to print them at the higher quality. Just gives that little bit of edge to it. Um, it that is, as I say, that's unusual for the larger printers I look at, where often you get the feeling that the extra, extra high settings that are available are nothing more than just there to make the specs look good in marketing materials. Um, for this though, it does actually make a difference because this is a pretty cheap printer by the standards of the ones I look at. Um, I think it's under uh, £200 in the UK. Um, yeah, I don't know what prices are elsewhere. But you know, it's an economic printer, especially when you consider how much ink there is in it. So it's a printer that is there to experiment with. Now, when you set things on the screen here, I would notice you know, one minor gripe is that it's a very small screen, it's low contrast, it's not backlit. But then it's, it's a relatively cheap printer. Uh, you get a screen on it. It's almost not a touch screen, you control it by buttons here uh, for, for doing everything here. Fairly straightforward. Um, every so often, you know, run a plain sheet of paper through it for a nozzle check. Um, it's important after you've set it up to do an alignment check as well, just to set the cartridge up because you have to install the cartridge when you're actually setting things up. So there we go, that's the basics of the printer. What about actually printing with it? Well, for colour, and I've got some examples of some prints I've done here, um, it's potentially very good. Now, if you print test images, like this one, this is on a glossy paper. I can see slight issues in tone, areas of strong tone, but you have to look quite carefully for it. Likewise with the test image that I've done on the thick media here. So it's capable of nice looking results. So we've got some more test images here. And one thing I would say is, when you're experimenting with a printer like this, do remember to write on the prints or on the back of the prints as to what the settings were, because otherwise you will quickly forget what you were doing and what was set to what. Uh, but in terms of this, I've got no problems with the actual print quality. Do I have any problems with it? Well, yes, I do have an issue with it. If you've seen some of my other uh, reviews, you know I like to make printer profiles to print with. And I normally print, um, these are the target sheets that you use for creating profiles. Um, I normally use uh, some quite advanced kit, uh, lots of patches to create color, image, color profiles that I can use for printing. And then I can test them with various test images that I've got, as well as real photos. I would say that if you're doing test work, when you're testing a new paper or a new printer, always start with a known test image, not one of your own images. Um, the test image, you're printing that. If you see something wrong there, something is wrong in your print setup. If you print one of your own images and it comes out wrong, well, who knows where the fault is? It could well come in your own image, something that you've never noticed, your monitor wasn't set up right or something like that. So, Always when you're testing, use test images. I've got a load of these you can download on the North Light Images website. There's loads of stuff like that. But anyway, I want to use colour profiles. 
Now, normally I make a color profile and when I print, I specify the color profile and that gets applied. Now, profiles, I've got stuff explaining what they actually are, what you do with them, but a profile is like a description of the performance of the paper and ink and printer together that is used to optimize the results. Now, on Windows machines, that works fine. I mentioned earlier the dreaded air print driver. Unfortunately, Apple has decided colour management is far too complex for people. Canon have gone along with them, unfortunately, in this instance, and there is no Canon driver as such where I can specify the colour management. So I have actually made profiles for this, but they are not profiles that uh, they're available for people who, who might want to experiment with them, but they'll only work on Mac systems because what they are is they're profiling the air print driver. They're not profiling at a low enough level that I would want to use. So in terms of profiles, on a PC, you can get profiles. Uh, they're unlikely to be available. Canon won't supply them. Uh, if you're buying third-party papers, and third-party papers work well on this printer with a profile, if you're buying that, many companies will actually supply or make custom profiles for you, for your papers, that if you buy paper off them. That's worth considering for something like this. My Mac profiles make a great improvement in print quality. Uh, it's very noticeable. Um, in colour images, it gives deeper colours, better colours, smoother colours, everything. The images are just better. If I look at um, a print that's printed using just the normal print driver, and this would go for Windows as well, not using profiles, if I just use the normal print driver, I can see that the colours are not as intense, and in particular, black and white, this section here of the test image, this one, uh, the black and white test image, it has a particular tint to it. And that tint varies in lighting. Now I've got a mix of a bit of daylight coming in through the windows here, and these are halogen uh, LED replacement LED lights. And with using just the printer driver, even if I select the black and white print mode, there's a little checkbox in the driver for black and white, even if I select that, the black and white prints just don't look good enough. They have a slight magenta bluish tinge to them, which I don't really want. If I'm printing black and white, I want black and white, please. I don't want bits of colour in with it. Worse still, the colour varies depending on the lighting. Now, it's not strong, and I've seen far worse in the past. I think it's got better. But this is, I'm going to put it down to a weakness of the black ink here. Now, I'll cover this in the written review in more detail, because it depends on the spectral response of the inks and things like that. And that's not something I'm going to show in, in, in the video. But essentially, it means you get something called illuminant metamerism, which means your prints change colour depending on what lighting you're using for them. Now, with really cheap printers, the effect can be really obvious. You can take your print, look at it in one light, and it has a greenish tinge, move to the other end of the room, and it suddenly has a purplish tinge. Um, that's what you used to have to deal with. I would say if you are really keen on black and white printing, go for pigment inks. The Pro 200, which is dye-based printer, can give good black and white results, and I've, I've got some examples of that. But if I really want to print black and white, I want pigment inks, and the next one up from that, the Pro 300, or the much larger Pro 1000, really will make a difference for black and white. But, you know, if you want to print a lot of black and white, and black and white is important to you, I'm afraid a cheap printer is not your option. Um, tough, that's the way it is at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, black and white prints, um, using my profile, and I would never normally recommend using a, a, an ICC profile for printing black and white. Normally the black and white mode of, dry, of the, drawing the driver is better. I wouldn't normally suggest that, but black and white can come out quite well. This is a picture, these are steps at Wells Cathedral, and that's on an art paper that's using my profile. Has a nice look to it. Um, I'm not sure how the combination of lighting and, and video here will precisely affect how this looks on, on the video, but actually that's not a bad looking print. Um, if I look at other 
areas that I've covered with this. That's a test print. Now I've got a black and white test image that's available that I use for testing a lot of black and white. Um, that has a slight, that's one with the driver, and to my eyes it has a bluish magenta-ish tinge in this light. That's, I don't like that look. So that's that. Whereas that, printed from my driver on the same luster paper, has a much more neutral look to it. Uh, this picture over here was printed using a driver. Um, there's a view in Colorado. Now that's a test image and there's, there's articles about using that and, um, and a video as well about using black and white test images. So that's playing around with black and white and it can give some quite nice looking results. Now, I specialise in black and white and have done for years. So I look at this and I can see mm, all kinds of things I'm not quite happy about. But that's because I'm being very picky. That's because I use a much more expensive printer than this to print black and white. However, if you want to get into just printing it, this is good enough. Um, I would say that if you get to the point where you find that the black and white problem uh, black and white images and prints that you're getting from this are not good enough then take that as a hint that your skills have advanced far enough that you're gonna have to spend some more money and get a better printer. Um, this is not a bad printer it is what it is it's a basic printer. So there's all the color ones there as I say cards likewise make sure you print on a proper card these are the pre-folded ones got lots of information about these Cards feed very well through it, so I have no problems with that. As so that particular test image is to help working out if the card is any good for you. Now, a few other things. Um, making profiles, normally I use some quite expensive kit for that, but I've also used the cheaper um, i1 Studio, or CC Studio as it is now, for making profiles. They work well for this. That's a more economical solution. I've got a video about making profiles if you're into it. And you can set custom pages. Now, you can do borderless, such as this. This is on a metallic gloss paper. Um, one from Permajet, it's written in the UK. Really nice gloss metallic finish, works well for some images. This borderless image here is just printed on luster paper. That's a, a spider um, dealing with a wasp that I saw out in the garden, just outside here. Um, another picture of a spider. Um, Another picture of a singer um, I went to see many years ago. But, you know, lots of interesting pictures. Lots of people have said, yeah, they look nice. And there is your thing. What is your audience for it? If you are putting pictures in for competitions at any significant level and putting prints in, this printer is not up to it. If you are printing for camera club, and uh, yeah, events and things. I'm going to say this printer with profiles is probably well up to it and is good enough. Now, you can also use custom paper sizes. So here is a print made um, of a custom paper size cut from a roll. So there you go, view of uh, scene in the Lake District in the UK. Um, printed, this is a finished matte paper, but it will take thicker papers as well. And uh, it prints, it takes a while to print something that size, um, but you can print panoramics as well. You can certainly get hold of um, what's called double A4, I've said it here in the UK, which is effectively a sheet that size, so it's double A4. It's actually half an A2 sheet, so you can cut A2 sheets in half to get it, and that gives you a panoramic size. That works very well on it as well. So, um, yeah, in terms of making prints, no problems. What do I think of its quality? Well, I've mentioned that yeah, for this printer, I pick the higher quality. Color management, <coughs> well, on a, on a PC, no problem at all. Use profiles if you can get them. On a Mac, you need to use profiles that are made to get round or try and get round some of the air print driver. Um, so it's somewhat problematic because unless you get profiles made for you,
buying paper, for example, they are not going to be profiles that work. So if you take a Windows profile for this, normally Mac and PC profiles are interchangeable ICC profiles. They may be called ICM pro, dot .ICM rather than dot .ICC, but they're the same thing. The color, yeah, the color profiles are interchangeable, but not on this printer, unfortunately. So if you're gonna use it on a Mac, be wary of the color management issues you may face. Print quality, go for the longer size of the longer print times. I think it makes a difference. Uh, if I've not got strong glasses on, the difference is not very visible to me. And I'm gonna say that to many people, if you show them two prints, they just go, yeah, they're the same picture. And they probably wouldn't notice it. Once again, depends on your audience, what you're using the prints for. Um, who's this for? Well, it's meant as a consumer printer for printing photos. Um, and it is good for that, and I'm sure many people will be happy just connecting their phone or iPad up to it, popping some lustre paper or gloss paper into there and just going print. And they will get prints that look okay. They won't get prints that look great. They might get pictures that look great, i.e. the content and the subject and what reaction people give to the picture might look great but from a technical point of view from a print point of view they're not going to be great prints but it's not sold as that if you want to make fine art prints black and white prints i'm afraid you need well one a bigger printer and ideally you need pigment inks for it but that comes at a price so you don't get the big ink tanks like this so that's who i think it's for once again, people are going to say, this printer is rubbish, why did you bother testing it? No, it's not rubbish. And that's the whole point. The printer is capable of producing nice looking prints. Sure, if I put them up against a printer that I've got that cost me £2,000 or something like that, I'm going to go, yeah, I can see the difference between them. But that's not the point. I'm looking at what you can get out of this printer. And in fact, certainly for a Mac user, I can get good prints out of it despite Canon's attempts at kneecapping the printer driver. Um, so, please Canon, accept that you've made a good printer mechanism here and bring out a proper printer driver for it. Um, you could get some, perhaps that doesn't fit the marketing positioning of it, but then that's not my matter. I don't sell printers. I've got no interest whether you buy a printer or not. So um, hopefully that sort of gives you an idea of uh, what this printer's like, what you can do with it. Please feel free to ask questions in the comments. So there'll be a lengthy written review as well. And uh, my Mac profiles, uh, they'll be listed, the ones I've made, in the written review. Have a look there. And if there are any that are listed there that you want to experiment with, let me know. I can probably email them to you. Don't just say all of them because I know you won't have some of the papers I've tested here. Um, you know, if you'd like to test them, they're available free for non-commercial use. Um, if you want anything for commercial use, contact me directly and I'll let you know. But why you would be using this printer for commercial use, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, hope that's been of interest and thank you very much.